well, not so much a return as well as posting some kind of update. And I think this has been the longest running content gap on the channel. And so I'm sure some of you um, are wondering what's going on. Well, somewhere around mid-December, I got COVID for the first time. Uh, and after about two weeks of probably the most sick I've ever been in my entire life, um, kind of got better, I returned to work, and then got really, really sick again. Um, which was not good because I was already pretty weak after that first bit. I lost about like 22 pounds in about a week because I literally couldn't bring myself to eat for the about half, half, halfway through COVID. It hit, hit my digestive system really bad, but not really my lungs, thankfully, I guess. Though, I probably would have traded coughs over not being able to eat, but without getting into the gory details, um, didn't get tested during any of this because, well, there was only one testing place in my entire town, um, and they basically weren't able to do testing at this point because this was right as Omicron was uh, really coming through. Um, I probably got sick from work. Um, in fact, I know I got sick from work because, I don't know, it's become a thing, especially here in conservative-ish leaning Kansas that you don't want to show you're weak to the virus so more people start showing up work to sick with things like the flu and colds in general which is nuts to me and I got exposed to COVID and the flu at the same time and I honestly might have had both at the same time considering how freaking bad it was um, and there was like no room at the local hospital anyway not that I really would have gone maybe I should have but I didn't um, but yeah, after getting better and pushing myself to go back to work, I got really sick again. Uh, pretty much all my symptoms came back. I was struggling to eat again. Um, it was probably mid-February before I could, like, just wake up and eat something without having to, like, I couldn't eat in the mornings, especially, and even then it, I got really sick after eating, which I still deal with to now, um, but I saw a doctor uh, and he was like, yeah, this is probably long COVID. Um, it's gonna take a long time, six plus months. Um, but you just kind of got to suck it up and it'll eventually, it'll probably go away. He said it in a much more medically sounding way, but that was essentially what, what he said. Um, yeah, and in case you can't tell, I'm kind of just ad-libbing this video. Um, so yeah, I'm still pretty sick. Um, I think I probably would have maybe recovered a lot better had I been able to just not go into work. Um, because what'll happen is I'll go back to work, I'll last about a week or two, um, and then I'll crash again. And I've just been doing that cycle over and over again, and taking a week or two, uh, working from home, maybe one or two days off, going back to work. The cycles are getting less bad each time, uh. Recently, my landlord decided that she was going to show someone the house that she's going to be selling, the, the, the house that I'm in, and she gave us like nine hours of warning and that it had to be spotless, like super clean. So I had to like clean up the whole house, and it admittedly had gotten kind of messy over how sick I've been. Um, yeah, it's been it's been rough, and now she's ghosting us about whether she's actually selling or whether we're gonna get to renew the lease. So I might have to move here too, and yeah, it's kind of amounting. All of these things are uh, why no videos I'm getting done. I don't think I've really read much of anything. Um, all the energy I have pretty much goes to work, and then not much else at my house, and a lot of just sitting around. I've been watching TV, which is weird for me, but been about the only thing I can do. Um, I mean, even to now, which is five months on, it's still pretty flippin' rough, so yeah. As part of this is that I actually decided to spin up a Patreon, um, in part because I do think my workplace is getting a little tired of how sick I've been. Um, I don't know if they're gonna fire me. They might, so... I might end up unemployed and without health insurance, which is fun. Um, 
but I have savings because I have a decent job, luckily. Um, but I do kind of want to at least get enough income on there on Patreon to at least cover the subscription for Storyblocks because I started including stock footage into my videos, which seems to have made people happy. So I guess it's worth it. Um, I think on my Patreon I post how much it costs. So I basically just want to break even on that so that my costs from the channel are minimized. Um, hopefully, though, I'll be, probably be fine if it doesn't. I don't know. I With the whole job shortage, I think it's been really hard for them to hire people. So I might be fine. I don't know. If I might be worrying over nothing, but it does seem some people in management are getting a little tired of me being sick. I've been ranting a lot on, or I did during the time that I was sick on Twitter, um, which I'm trying to move away and get away from Twitter and just go back to Mastodon. But I've complained about a lot of this on Twitter slash Mastodon. I mirror my tweets over to Mastodon as toots. And then on my Mastodon, I occasionally post things that aren't posted on Twitter. Um, this is kind of getting rambly. Um, COVID sucks. Long COVID sucks. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, so what I am going to stick on the Patreon, because I'm probably, you know, I'm asking people to give me money to a channel that's probably not going to upload for a while longer yet, because I am not better, and I'm probably going to have to end up seeing a different doctor and seeing if there's anything I can do about it. But because uh, the fucking government and other people have kind of waited to start really pushing research on long COVID until like these last few months, and as well as I think not taking COVID as seriously as it is, given how bad long COVID can be. And if we keep going through these cycles of more and more people getting it, we're going to have more and more people functionally disabled for months. And some people... With long COVID, I would argue get lucky and just get a little bit of brain fog for a couple months and then mostly recover. But I think I saw like half of people with long COVID can't hold down a job. And I would, that would be me if I was not as lucky as I am with the job that I have. And, you know, the labor shortage, which probably isn't real. It's people not paying people enough and I think not giving people time to recover from COVID. Um, and this is probably just something we're going to have to live with. Um, thankfully, the vaccines do reduce people's chance to get long COVID by like 50%, it seems. So if you haven't, I would suggest you probably consider that. Because um, this sucks. It really, 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 really does. Um, but anyway, I'll quit with the COVID ramble. I don't know who's going to still be listening through this. Um, but I'm going to upload what scripts that I do have in progress that I consider at least previewable. I'll put on the Patreon and that'll be kind of the benefit is that while well, I'm not putting anything out, you can see my script output of like the previous six months because I was really gearing up for that Christmas break. I'd get a little time off at work. And I would just hammer out like a video per day was my uh, was my goal, and that didn't that didn't happen because I got I got sick, <laughs> and I literally couldn't talk for like two and a half weeks because it really messed up my throat too. Um, but for the rest of this video, um, let's let's talk about those scripts, and I'll, I'll I'll talk about what I might be doing here in the future if I get the energy to work on it, or at least cover uh, what what's there. Um, so we'll jump over to Overleaf, which is the editor that I use. I used to just write everything in LaTeX using Vim, uh, which is a command line text editor on Linux because that's what I was used to. Um, so the most recent one that I actually worked on while I was sick, um, well, a couple of these I plugged a little bit at. Um, there was like two or three weeks where I thought I was better before the long COVID really hit, which seems to be a common thing. Um, just something that happens, I guess. Um, my body tricked me into thinking I was better than I was. And I tried to get back to stuff. Anyway, the first one is Perspective on Fuck Cars from Rural America. Um, the fuck cars on the uh, Reddit. Um, it's a subreddit. It's uh, gained a certain degree of popularity and I think um, plenty of channels um, on targeting more of the left, at least the ones that haven't 
gone bananas and pivot, tried to pivot into being foreign policy analysis. Um, you know, there's been a lot of content made, uh, and I'm blanking on some of the channel's names, but there's, there's sort of, sort of in the zeitgeist, um, right now along the left, which I think ties into climate change, um, and as well as just how individualized car transit tends to be, as well as suburbs, and the racist history of suburbs, so I'm not saying it's wrong, um, honestly, the, the main point of the video is that I'm tired of people being, using that as an argument against some of these, uh, talks, it's like, well, what about those people in rural areas, and it's, that person doesn't live in a fucking rural area, they might, they might think they do, but they probably live in a suburb that just happens to have a cornfield, um, you know, I grew up in western Kansas, that's where my hometown is, but, you know, I, uh, don't live there anymore, because I needed to find employment, um, because food is good, um, but yeah, I, uh, I want to talk about my thoughts on that, um, and until I was 18, I rode a bike everywhere before I decided to move out of my hometown, um, so I have some thoughts on it, <laughs> um, then we have a video that I was kind of questioning whether I should just can, even when I was writing it, and now thinking even more, which is responding to a Marxist-Leninist YouTuber by the name of Fellow Traveler. Um, I wrote this, or started writing this, because I, in like the span of two weeks, got a bunch of messages from freaking Twitch streamer podcast crap people that I've never heard of being like, will you come and debate fellow traveler i might be able to set you up with a debate with this guy called infrared then to these people who i'd never heard of before and i can't say that i have any desire to debate them or really anyone but doubly so them but one of them just seems to be a twitch streamer and the other one actually makes videos sometimes and i clicked on one of them and unfortunately watched it all the way through and just got this sudden urge to respond to it and i know i said i don't want to do response videos um, especially to other YouTube channels, because that's, eh, I don't know, it's too YouTube drama-y and bread to be, and I don't like that. Um, but I was possessed to do it for whatever reason, and I'll probably end up putting this out. And, um, it's pretty much finished. It'll be one of the scripts that I do put up on Patreon. Um, the World War II Red Army Ration. Uh, this, this was gonna be kind of an experiment with a different video type. I have a reproduction of a, which as far as I can tell is pretty, pretty accurate, of a World War II Red Army Ration. Um, and I would, you know, record me cooking it and eating it. And during that I would talk about the food that was available for soldiers and a little bit of the civilians during you know, World War II or the Great Patriotic War. Um, yeah, and maybe contrast that with some of the things that were available in other armies um, and just kind of what some of the Red Army went through with regards specifically to food, uh, which is not fun. It would not have been a happy video, the, the Red Army experience. I mean, World War II was... A lot of people died. I'm sure you all know that. Um, it was... War is bad. Uh, it, it, but... It would have been a little bit more off the cuff or a little less organized trying to do it as I was cooking. And I thought that might be a fun, different video to do despite the kind of gloomy topic. Um, because a lot of these guys did not get enough food, especially in certain fronts. Um, a lot of civilians did not get enough food, um, especially those in like Leningrad. But really on the whole, um, it would not have been a happy video and now I'm rambling. This is why I need a script. Um... And I keep saying, um, a lot, and I'm probably gonna be too lazy to edit this video in any way, but who knows, maybe people like the more off-the-cuff style. I mean, people like Twitch streamers for whatever reason, but I like being able to edit myself. But we'll see how this does, this 20-minute update video. Um, that one might come out pretty soon, honestly, if I get the urge to finish it this summer. It's pretty close to done, it's more about recording it. Um, I'm also noticing I'm talking a little loud into the microphone, um, because I've been sick and I've been home a lot, um, I, like, haven't, I've probably spoken less than, like, a combined, like, 45 minutes, I don't know, to, uh, maybe not counting my roommate, I haven't been talking a whole lot, because I've just been alone at home 
all the time and going to work and struggling through that. So, uh, I'm not practiced at talking, uh, and I'm probably talking a lot lower instead of higher. Um, what else we got here? Soviet ban on homosexuality under Stalin. Um, kind of is what it says on the 10. Um, we talk about the rights of, uh, the homosexual, uh, in the early USSR and up through, through Stalin, um, and the eventual banning of it. Um, this, this decided to, I decided to make this because I think I saw some thread from a Marxist, Leninist, Maoist, I don't remember, one of the various flavors. And uh, they were they were saying, oh, St Stalin and them never banned homosexuality. They just banned uh, pederasty. Um, and the great thing is in the time since this video came out, um, the Republican right has really revived the whole all the queers are pedophiles thing. Um, so, you know, that kind of makes my point for me that, you know, the the term that they they used for the gays also overlaps with pederasty, um, but they just mean gays in general. That's that's a bullshit excuse. That's not they 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 banned being gay. Um that that person who had posted that is uh very wrong. Wow, this is taking forever. Again, this is why I need scripts. Cause my videos are long enough as is, and if I just let myself talk, I'll never shut up. Um, let's see, how to lie. This is one I already put out. I need to archive that. Uh, the Revolutionary Socialist Network. Uh, they're a group of various parties here in the U.S. I wanted to interview two members and just kind of talk about it to try and focus on, like, actual parties and organizing and modern stuff a little bit. Um, but it just never happened. Um, the weird sex politics of the World Socialist website and the, uh, Socialist Equality Party... Um, I think a lot of people occasionally come across their articles. Um, they have some really weird thoughts on some old celebrities who I've mostly never heard of, like Woody Allen. I don't know who the fuck that is. I had to look that up. Um, and one of the other ones, Polanski, uh, who I also had never heard of. Um, but a bunch of wealthy celebrities who've engaged in sexual misconduct or other kind of creepy behavior. They have this obsession with defending them. And I just kind of want to call them out on that because I don't like them very much. Um, maybe that's too drama-y, but I think we have to be able to call out people, you know, who are nominally on our side on the left. Um, and their positions are pretty gross. Um, compulsory labor in the Russian Revolution. Uh, I've heard exactly what brought our on doing this video um i don't think the script's particularly done that one's probably in the graveyard um peasant slaughter of animals during the soviet 1930s famine uh so since the beginning of this channel i always knew that i'd end up doing a big video on the holodomor or the soviet 30s famine if you get a if you're one of those people who just can't stand that word and get really bothered by it. Um, uh, but I decided doing a three hour long video um, would be the worst thing on the planet. Um, even though I know that's like in vogue to do like a 12 hour video examining like two episodes of a cartoon on BreadTube. Whatever the hell they're doing over there. Um, I don't want to do that. I feel like the type of people I want to listen to it probably wouldn't. And it would be hard for a person wanting to, you know, coming up against some arguments. I mean, to be blunt, the Soviet government's at fault. Um, hands down for the famine. The famine happened. Uh, some people raise that in the question and they're wrong. The Soviet government's at fault, just flat out. Um, and so I kind of wa more want to focus on the bullshit arguments that people make to make excuses for the Soviet government. Like, well, it's just those idiot peasants. They just murdered all the animals and then they all starved to death. Oops. Um, which is horseshit. I didn't mean for that to be a joke, but I guess talking about horses works. Um, 
it's wrong. I could give you an overview. Uh, there was a lot of disease because there was a shortage of fodder. If you don't eat, the horses get sick. Um, there is a lot of low quality fodder. Um, if you want meat from animals, you have to kill them. Um, so killing animals can't directly cause a famine immediately. And the killing was one pretty close. Um, you could argue just killing their horses. Maybe that caused enough shortage to be able to act. Uh, but even that's not the case. There was an excessive amount of horses and... In reality, killing those horses probably saved food for humans to eat, as well as turned them into food, because you have to kill animals to get meat from them. And for the amount of calories you get out of an animal, you have to give them more. Like, there's a loss there. Uh, this is this is the argument of vegetarian and veganism uh, to save on land use um, in regards to climate change, just general environmental destruction. Um because if you just grow that food directly for humans, it gets used more efficiently. Um, as well as, historically, growing herd sizes during uh, plentiful years and then culling them uh, during famines is a very, like, it, like, human civilization back to, like, the dawn of farming. And probably before that, I'm not super educated on that but it's a mechanism in which human societies have used to store food before refrigeration and obviously you can dry grains and there's a lot of ways to store food um but one way is to basically keep those calories alive on animals and so you grow the herd during plentiful years and then slaughter uh during shortages um which is what we saw happen so slaughtering your animals does not somehow magically trigger a famine um Wow, this is getting really rambly. Um, the next video that I would do in that series is covering the weather. Um, the, the whole, do oh, you think Stalin paid the clouds not to rain? Which is a bullshit thing. Um, generally, in the modern era, all famines are man-made. Um, we're not small substance, substance farmers and like small villages where we just get a multi-year drought and there's just nothing that could have been done and some people die. Um... We, we, governments decide whether they're going to store food, whether they're going to, uh, you know, the amount they're going to grow. Um, famines are man-made. Uh, we, we create them. An interesting book on this topic, not specific with Holodomor, but The Man-Madeness of Famines, um, that you should give a read is Late Victorian Holocausts, um, which deals with, uh, mostly some of the famines in areas the British colonized. It's a good book. Um, I'm not going to try and summarize it here. Um, but yeah. So, and I guess another example, I don't know why I'm defi this is basically what I was some of the stuff that's from the script, so I don't know why I'm including it here in this half an hour update video. Um, but I guess maybe this will, you know, this will, this, this, this counts as covering some history and this is kind of getting me back into it i don't know it's my channel i don't make money from it granted i do have that patreon now that's just me trying to break even which i guess is making some money from it but i want to talk about this and upload a hour-long update video because i can and if no one listens to it i guess that's okay um but another example is the coronavirus thing, uh, it, that is a man-made, uh, disaster. Um, Joe Biden or Donald Trump didn't necessarily pay the virus to mutate. Um, but the crisis is in part due to the actions of various governments. Um, I think the origin of the virus is a little bit debated, but there does seem to be some connection to the consumption of animals. Um, a lot of diseases originate from animals, and I've seen some vegetarians and vegans make the argument that this might not have happened had we not, as a human species, consumed animals like this. Um, and i not researched in the origin of disease, but there might be some merit to that argument, and or our government's choice not to send out masks at the beginning of this um, is a choice that probably got people killed. Um, that that crisis you know was man-made um how we respond to these things even if the original sort of catalyzing 
point of it wasn't necessarily, though I think it really was too in the case of the Soviet famine, which was collectivization. Um, but I'll get into that in the video, and I'm sure I'm going to get some comments on this because um, I'm not going to defend my points in whole. And maybe I should just shouldn't have included this, but I've already decided I'm not going to edit this. So, yeah, let's just keep going. Um, the first Soviet government, the left SR and Bolshevik coalition. Uh, this gets talked about a little bit by people, but usually in relation to the Brest-Litovsk Treaty. And there's a lot of other interesting things. I also... One of the things that I really detest about Soviet history is I'm not saying you have to love the Bolsheviks, but there does seem to be this thing where it's the evil Bolsheviks just took away government power from all these factions who are benevolent and good. Uh, and a lot of what people really don't like about the Bolsheviks are, at least among the left, are positions the left SRs agreed with, and in some cases the Mensheviks agreed with. Um, so I was going to talk about things like prison policy, um, and compulsory labor in the prisons, which kind of also grew into that other video, but I think I'm just going to scrap the compulsory labor in the Russian Revolution. Um, yeah, the Bolsheviks and the left SRs kind of saw eye to eye on that. Uh, so, I don't know, there's a, there's some other things that, that kind of go over that, uh, which doesn't necessarily make necessarily that position of the Bolsheviks good or bad, but I have this really strong dislike of this other faction that was in power at all would have been sunshine and rainbows if they had just, if they had just won. Um, because things don't work like that. <laughs> History doesn't work like that. Humans don't work like that. Um, when we really, this is meta again, but one, oh god, I need scripts, but maybe I don't. I'm going to be really horrified if this gets lots of views and people are like, wow, I really love the just deranged rambles of just random facts, which probably aren't as fact-checked because the main reason I do really strict scripts and people have been like, you would sound more natural talking if you didn't use scripts, uh, which is probably true. I'm not very good at sounding natural when reading from scripts. I'm really good about going from my brain. Um, though, even if I don't look at my scripts, which I don't for part of my video, like... I wrote these things. I have a lot of that memorized. Um, the problem is when I do that, I have to go re-edit the script because I want to cite every single fact I put into my videos because that's important. Uh, especially in the, the, the ML video I respond to, uh, you can just tell that they're like half regur like they're regurgitating facts they half remember. And maybe the facts were kind of true, but maybe they're from a bad source. And I mean, it's... I hate that, uh, but I also haven't found a way to balance that out with not sounding hyper-scripted, uh, so I'm going to be really bothered if people like this portion. I guess if you do like this more rambly style, I don't know how I'll combine that with actually sourcing things and having proper citations and publishing scripts. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm ever going to figure that one out, how exactly I need to present that. Anyway, let me, let's me let finish through this list so I don't make this video an hour long. Um, maybe I'll just cap off the video with me rambling about long COVID, probably. Um, the rest of my Bukharan video, the Bukharan video I originally wrote is one video, um, but it would have been like three hours. I don't want to make three hour videos. I want to keep things shorter if I can, though it's kind of unavoidable to cover certain topics. And doing them in parts seems to dissuade views. I don't know. But I don't care that much about views. My goal isn't to become a YouTuber or, you know, get a super big number of views. I want people to be more educated on these, these things and go do research. And part of my hope is that by covering these things, the people that I, you know help guide to better education will then repeat this and hopefully maybe somebody who's into this will either like through a party or on their own um who has like charisma and can do speaking and is more motivated can help disseminate some of these facts and research to to more people um because i'm kind of not good at that um but we'll see 
Um, but yeah, the Picard video would have been too long, so I broke it up, but the other two parts are pretty much done. Um, I'll probably include that script on the Patreon. Um, shock workers and labor discipline during the first and second five-year plan. This kind of became an in-general video about the conditions of workers through the like late NEP and into the, the and what changed during the first and second five-year plan. I don't know if this one will come out because I kind of don't. It's drifted all over the place. Um, and that happens a lot. Some of the videos that aren't listed here are, or some of my videos are cannibalized forms of other videos. Um, that's always going to happen. Um, a biography on Yakov Sverdlov. Um, a pretty important Bolshevik, but he died during uh, the revolution and preceding civil war. And so he's not talked about a whole lot, but he's actually a really interesting person. Um, I really hate this script. If I do end up making this video, which I would really like to someday, I'm just going to start over. I don't like uh, that script at all. It's kind of just a jotting down of a bunch of facts. And the other problem is there's not a lot of sources on Sverdlov. He hasn't been particularly studied. Um, there's a person whose name I'm forgetting. Um, my memory has been worse since COVID, though it's getting better. I don't know. One COVID's weird with the brain fog. Um, but he wrote it as uh, like a uh, paper for college, like a PhD. I forget if it was, I don't know. Man, my memory is really failing me. Um, this thesis? Is that the right word? I don't know. I'm not, I've never been to a university. I've never taken a university class. Um, not that well educated. But yeah, he wrote his like his PhD thesis, where the hell that is. And so it's just as a student, and uh, it's not real good. It also has a weird rant about, I think, Vietnam protesters in the middle of it. It's kind of a hilarious thing. Um, but it's one of the main only sources on Sfared Love, um, but there's a lady um, who's done a little bit more research on Sfared Love, especially his roles in the government, and kind of disagreed with some of that guy's findings. I also think, like, it's pretty clear that he's a conservative, and I think it kind of poisons how I view certain things. And, I don't know, it's just not a well-written source. I don't feel like, though it's kind of the only one to go off of. Um, so I'll... And then I think he wrote some other papers after he graduated. And those were kind of what I was originally using as the sourcing, as well as trying to re cross-reference dates and things to other books, and especially when he interacted with other Bolsheviks. But it's kind of a mess, and I hate the script. Um, a video series on Georgia... This one I really, 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 really want to do, but it just kind of hasn't happened. Um, there'd be three parts, and what I called a video zero, video one, and a video two. Video zero would just cover, like, in the broadest terms, where is Georgia located? No, it's not the U.S. state, being that most of my audience is American and probably can't point to Georgia on a map. Probably can't point to Russia on a map. I'm stereotyping a little bit here, but... Uh, so yeah, just general rundown of the Caucasus and the history of Georgia up through, you know, when the uh, revolution happened there. And then I would cover the, the sort of Menshevik government there. And then the next, and that was the Menshevik government and the, the, was it the Georgian Democratic Republic? Fuck, I should know that. I blame COVID. Democratic Republic of Georgia. Uh, and then the last video would be Sovietization of Georgia and the Georgian Affair, um, which I know a lot about the Sovietization and the Georgian Affair. I really, really, really want to do a video covering that. Um, I talked about it a little bit in my Bukharan video. Um, not the one that's out, but the part two I do. Um, and I think I talked about it in one of the other uh, the Alt History Hub response. I talk about it a little bit there. That's the stuff I really know about. I don't know actually a whole lot about Menshevik Georgia the, slash the Democratic Republic of Georgia. Uh, and so this is also just kind of an excuse for me to do reading on it because I wanted to learn about it. Which sometimes my videos are that. I don't I don't walk into these videos with a conclusion most of the time. Um, unless it's something I've already read a lot about. Um, but I just try to learn about it and bring the facts and explain it in a condensed version. Because uh, I think that results in hopefully less... We humans have a bad habit of uh, digging for facts to support what we want and uh, 
it's kind of unavoidable. I'm sure I've done it a little bit in my video. Well, probably more than a little bit, but I really, really try to avoid it as much as possible. And I think trying not to walk in with a really strong conclusion helps with that. Uh, yeah. Oh, God, 35 minutes. I'm sorry. I don't, don't, just quit. Just close out of this video. I'm going to keep doing this. It's going to keep going. <laughs> I'm going to be disappointed if anybody's, well, I don't know if I'm disappointed, but why would anybody listen this far? <laughs> uh, so yeah, that would happen, intersex and trans rights in the early USSR. Um, despite being a queer, uh, I'm really bad about writing about it, and I'll be honest, queer history on the whole bores the shit out of me. Um, I just don't care. <laughs> I'm not saying it's unimportant and it's something other people shouldn't read about, but it's kind of something I don't care about at all in the slightest. Um, I like to do a video on Bleeding Kansas. Um, not something talked about a whole lot. Um, I'd also like to do a video on Volga German uh, settlers coming to Kansas, and they came to other parts of the U.S. too, um, but specifically their history here in Kansas because it's literally never talked about here. I had no idea Volga Germans came here. Uh, we talk about German immigration, and I think a lot of people have confused their ancestors being Volga Germans to just being Germans from Germany, or on occasion I've seen people talk about having Russian ancestors, uh, when it's clear that they're speaking about Volga Germans, um, at least here in Kansas. It didn't help that the newspapers at the time, uh, called them German-speaking Russians, I don't think the settlers that were here before had any idea who the people were showing up. They talked funny, and they knew German, but they ate Russian food, and no one could make sense of that. And I, again, I don't think, especially at that time, most Americans could have pointed to Russia on a map. Um, yeah, and then maybe someday I'll actually finish up the, the Breslatovsk series, which was like my one of my first five videos, and then I just haven't touched since. Uh, I don't know why. I think the topic's interesting. I have the research kind of done. Though unfortunately, due to how disorganized my research system is, I've kind of lost some of that. Um, then, Moscow during the October Revolution. This one is not happening ever, and there's not really much of a script there, because what was there, I kind of just took the some of the bigger bits that I wanted to include and toss it in the Bakarin video, because I in part realized I ended up talking about Bakarin a good bit in there, and was just, well, you know, it's better to do that in its own video, specifically about Bukharin. Um, yeah, and so that's, that's, that's what's potentially going to be coming out in the next year, depending on what I get the urge to work on. Um, I'll probably finish the fuck car videos sometime, I don't know, it just depends when I get the desire to work on it, uh, which might be soon. I don't know. I'm really out of the habit of just reading in general, because again, I had been 100% of all of my energy I had going to work because I need food and not, and I need to not get fired. So any amount of energy towards any amount of my hobbies has been zero, which has resulted in me watching television because I haven't had anything else better to do. Um, and... Yeah, so I haven't been real productive, and I kind of hate it, but I haven't been able to do anything. Um, hopefully I start to get better. Um, I'm sorry for this video being so long, but I don't know. I just uh, wanted to get something up, and I didn't have the urge to script. I kind of worked on a script for this, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk. Um yeah, so I'll close out here. Um, you can check out my Patreon and try to help me cover the costs of the story blocks and the overleaf, which I think adds up to like 80 bucks a month. Don't, if it hits that, don't give me money. I don't need money. Don't give me money past that. I don't know. I might open that up a little bit more if I become unemployed to just slow down my losses, though I have. I need to look at what happens if I cancel story blocks. I don't know if they do copyright claims on the videos because I'm not paying them anymore or. But they just try to throw ads on them. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't really been posting any threads on Soviet history on Twitter because it just. I haven't been reading anything. Um, 
And as far as stuff with regards to long COVID, I don't have any deep secrets with it. Um, you'll feel your body will deceive you into feeling better than it is. Uh, take it as easy as you can. Um, you might have to quit your job in order to get that. Um, so that's where things are right now. Um, I don't think there's any hope for any quick cures this year. Um, I think there's some research on if the antiviral pills help. Um, it seems to be maybe autoimmune connected dysregulation or something. I'm not a doctor, um, but yeah, there's there's some miracle cures going around the internet. And that's I don't know if you ate eight Flintstone vitamins and it made you feel better with long COVID. I guess good for you. Um, I don't put a lot of stock in that. Uh, my best recommendations from my experience with it is rest a lot. Um, and when you do start feeling better, continue to rest for a while. I saw an interview, I think in the BBC, um, with a triathlon athlete who said that they had bad relapse after trying to start running again. And, uh, the, they, what finally did is they, after they felt better, they said, I'm not doing anything for another three months still. And then they said after that three months, they were able to start doing things again. Um, so I'm hoping the summer is where I can continue to take it easy and then start doing things again, which means I've already lost like half of 2022. And it feels real shitty losing half of a year to not doing anything with any of my hobbies, to not being able to work as much and not doing anything with this channel. Um, so I'm sorry about that. And I guess thank you if you listen this long. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry that this 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 went on for 45 minutes, but people listen to like five hour Twitch streams, so I'm sure somebody will listen to this. Uh, not that you should feel bad. I guess if you derive entertainment from that, there's worse things in the world. I just don't entirely get it. I wouldn't watch this. I, I wouldn't watch my own videos. I don't think. Though I'd probably find them boring because I know it's in them already, and I had to watch them like 36 times while making them. I'm really rambling. This is why I need scripts. Somebody at one point said, you should not read off a script. Do you want all videos to turn into a multi-hour ramble? Because uh, they will. They really will. Anyway. Um, yeah, so that's what's been going on. I'm sure I'll post updates on... I'll, I'll toot out updates on Mastodon. I'll probably, hopefully flash on screen or put in the comment or the description of the video which YouTube now like hides because their interface is ass now though it's been ass for a while but I'll I'll link to the Mastodon and to the Twitter which I'm trying to use less because proprietary platforms um, that was a video I was considering making at some point I was just going to make a video shilling for Linux and some of the alternative platforms in terms of avoiding government surveillance and corporate surveillance, but uh, maybe that would be a fun video, just a ramble for 45 minutes about. I don't know. I need to find a closing point. I'm gonna, yeah. So I'll put that stuff there. You can, if you want to see, if any of these videos you want to see me work on sooner, I guess you can ask in the comments, but I can't promise that's, I'm gonna prioritize based on, based on that. I just need to find a book and start reading again. Because um, I'm, I don't know, I haven't read anything on Soviet history in like seven months. Uh, not a bit, but yeah, so. I'm also up to 2,000 subscribers, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that's just kind of been passively happening while I haven't been releasing anything. So, yeah, a 50 minute update video. That's excessive. I'm not going to do anything about it. Cause I'm kind of want to see if anybody listens to this point of me just deranged rambling with brain damage from COVID slash long COVID slash fever or whatever the heck causes the brain fog. Though it's kind of gotten better. Anyway, I don't know if you, if you have any other questions about the long COVID or anything, I don't do anything these days. So I'm sure I'll read the comments on this. Anyway, I guess thanks for watching this long. I'll hopefully release a video soon. <laughs> Bye.